as we are heading our way into the um yeah the announcement let's see what the prediction is hmm i mean we basically had our whole story with the dragons and the void um so my prediction is either we are going to uh maybe the void twisting nether and um yeah basically explore the whole demon part um that was something that we kind of thought going into um after the legion part expansion since we went into argus and whatever the demons and they at least everything of course then we got bfa uh which was uh, I didn't want to call it a shit show, but it was some kind of weird expansion transition that we had um, after the demons. Um, besides that, I do think that a transition to the dragons that we have after BFA with the whole uh, Rathion part uh, would be interesting. I mean, we got, of course, in BFA some kind of demon part with, uh, well, not really demons, with, with the void-ish uh, territory with the whole Nassau situation and uh, the old gods. So, my prediction is either going into the Twisting Nether and the explore the whole de demon part. Um, I do enjoy the whole situation that we had during Cataclysm, the whole Dragon's part, the whole Dragon Souls, the whole... Uh, yeah, the whole Rathion part that we kind of skipped over. Um, yeah, I like to see some um, dragons, more dragons because I love dragons. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I always enjoyed uh, the dragons as a theme. Even in a Pokemon game, I was all team dragon, team this. So my prediction, like I said, it's either demons or dragons. Um, what else do we can we expect? I mean, let's see. At the start of BFA, we had um, the part uh, of the new. Uh, was it only two years? Wait, was it? Is it already two years ago that we had um, the the Burning Crusade Classic? So maybe some kind of announcement about uh, Wrath of the Lich King, which was basically the part where I started. I think at the end of Burning Crusade, maybe a month before Burning uh, Wrath of the Lich King came out, I um, got myself into the game by friends and girlfriend back then. Uh, yeah, so if something Wrath of the Lich King related happens, then I'm totally up for it. Um, I don't know, maybe... I mean, if is this totally related to... Um, to World of Warcraft, or is it just the Warcraft universe in general? Because we still, of course, have the Warcraft 3 um, Reforged, was it? That came out like four years ago. That, as far as I know, never really got a uplift. So maybe we'll see something about that in the game. But I, as far as I know, this is really World of Warcraft related uh, announcement. Um, I assume just class changes, um, maybe we will see refamped zones, um, what kind of dragon island, dragon, dragon isle could be a thing, um, maybe Twilight Highlands, uh, maybe we'll see some kind of North Dormu, Morazond, um, what's the ND dungeon called? Uh, Endgame? What's the Endgame? The one with the whole hourglass in the middle? I believe it was Endgame. Um, maybe some kind of refamped uh, Dragon Soul ish. I mean, that would mean that we need a uh, 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 Deathwing back, right? I mean, that's basically the whole situation how the Dragon Souls started. Um,. What kind of thing do we more want to see if it's dragon related? Um, maybe some kind of dragon 
class. I mean, if you're going to, let's say, if, I mean, a dragon, uh, no, sorry, a demon class race, that will be the demon hunter. So, if we're going dragons, then we will some kind of see a dragon theme class race that basically is a human and transitions into a dragon, for example. Uh, I don't know how that will work, but hey, uh, I mean, we're in some kind of wor weird, wor weird, whoops, <laughs> weird way, weird world where basically everything is possible as long as people like to enjoy playing it. Um, what else can we expect? It's dragon related. I mean, demon related. We have everything. You know, it's, it's basically different warlock stuff, and 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 demon hunters is demon-ish related um sorry with the art earplugs it's kind of a messy stuff in here so it's uh, yeah whatever um what else can we expect from dragons i mean except from i mean of course more dragon mounts more dragon pets uh dragon themed uh raids dungeons dragon dragon tear sets i mean yeah, what else can we see? I don't know. I mean, the whole... The more thinking that I'm not thinking about the whole dragon part. I mean, we of course know some kind of leaked stuff that happened about the dragons. And of course, we don't know if it's real. And that we will find out in a few minutes. But, um... It would be cool to see more dragons. Themed items, gears, uh, mounts. Because I'm more, still, still up to this point a uh, mount hoarder. Even though I still miss a lot of mounts, but hey, that's a sign. Um, so yeah, um, if I want to choose between dragons or demon related, then I am. My first guess, my first option would be the dragons. A multiple opinion based stuff, but uh, yeah. So yeah, we have to check. Maybe we could have seen um, some kind of hints in the, the cinematic, or sorry, not the cinematic, into the um, the screenshots or the, the 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 stuff that we see on screen. I mean, of course, they went through all the expansions, right? So it's not really that we miss a whole lot of stuff. But okay. I mean, it's interesting to see. How we've come to so far in this whole franchise, basically. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I can't. I can't wait. Sadly, I haven't really played that much of Shadowlands to kind of give me an opinion based on Shadowlands what the most logical transition would be. But from the parts that I do have played. At the start of the expansion and kind of a few months ago, well, last month, right after the whole Battle.net uh, client shit show happened. Since I still can't play, but hey, whatever. One minute to go, guys, and um, yeah. What are your thoughts? Leave it, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know. What, what are your thoughts about the whole, uh, about this whole expansion, upcoming expansion? Ooh. Yeah, I'd like to see, yeah, I'd like to see the whole uh, dragon's part as well. I mean, Shadowlands wasn't that bad to from the points that I've played, but I do think that it felt a lot longer than it used to. I don't know if it really comes to the, the expansion itself or just like the whole shit show that happened in the last two or three years that we're all been to. But yeah, it, it feels like we need something new instead of staying into this death related part. So yeah, 10, 10, 15 seconds left. And then we will find out what the next expansion will be. What do you think? Dragons, demons? Maybe even just the Naru thing, you know, maybe we will complete the ground. We'll find out. So let's go. I'll change it a little bit to the side. So you guys can also see the video a little bit better. Oh. 
Oh, I can't wait. All right, so this is classic. Dragons. Oh, this base. Okay, this is just a recap. This had nothing to do with. Uh, Oh, let's go. Next chapter. For Azeroth. Oh yeah. All right, let's go. Come on, give me, give me, give me. Hi everyone. I'm John Height, General Manager for Warcraft, and with me today are my friends Ian Hazekostas, who is the Game Director for World of Warcraft, and Holly Longdale, who leads up the production team for WoW Classic. Ooh. I really appreciate you tuning in. I know we're really excited to be able to give you updates on what's happening. I'm sure we'll get some classic, but first right? I want to thank our community Why else would you put a classic given us team year. member in there? And especially our community council. You've helped shape and influence the updates that we've done recently mm -hmm. and what you're going to see in the upcoming year. I mean, really, for Shadowlands in particular, the story of the last nine months or so of, of this expansion is all about the community. And it's shaped by what we've been hearing from them and us realizing as a team that we just collectively needed to do a better job of making sure the community felt heard. And so that led us to the changes we made in 915, but also really re-examining some of the assumptions and foundations of World of Warcraft about things like character investment and mains versus alts, or how catch-up should work, or the appropriate role of friction in our systems. And I think 915 represented a step in the direction of letting players have more freedom to play World of Warcraft the way they want to play it. And we really built our Eternities and content update from the ground up around those principles. What are some of the things that the community said that, that influenced your decisions for Eternities and? Things like the method and pacing of acquisition of the Covenant Legendary item, tons of tuning, and I think every step of the way, um, we were listening to make sure that we were carrying forward those lessons learned in the course of 915 into Eternity's End and beyond. So, WoW Classic yeah. was really, came about because of the community. Yeah, they continue to help guide and support us as Classic evolves. World of Warcraft has always been about the world and the players that inhabit it. And we are in a lot of ways curators and caretakers mm -hmm. of that journey and of that experience. And so once this classic community formed and grew, we had to listen to them. It's this tide of listening to the community and paying attention to what is a good experience for our players now. Um, and where we really saw a sea change in this idea is with our Season of Mastery realm, which is a season of Fresh Start Classic. And initially, we were I like that whole idea, yeah. Was going to be like Even though I've never start. played Classic. We'll try this experiment in a season. It'll be about a year long. And then when the community found out about it... We I feel like I should. Upswell. Yeah, the team just took that idea and ran with it yes. and turned, you know, what started out as a small community project. Mm -hmm into this Soul of Iron system that became a centerpiece <laughs> of Season of Mastery and a whole new opt-in hardcore mode that we've seen communities built around. Yep. Lots of, you know, thrilling victory and painful defeat. <laughs> five um, hours. I made it five <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, and it continues. Like the Burning Crusade Classic, we wanted to balance the Paladin seals between Horde and Alliance, so we made an addition there. We wouldn't have gotten there without Oh, yeah, the, the seals. Input. Oh, that was a painful thing. So, influence the community, you've got another update and pretty significant controversial change for this. Yeah, cross-faction play uh, coming coming in 925 <laughs> uh, on our public test realm now as a big Ian, centerpiece. cross-faction. Yep. You're breaking with a 17-year tradition. Yeah, it's something, it was not an easily made decision by any means, you know, and I think this is another one of those areas. Something that we asked for. We tried to take to heart. Or I mean, like forever, or at least some process. sort of cross-faction uh, thingy. Way to accommodate such an earnestly held desire. I don't know how it is to this point, so to the, to the roots I can't really give my opinion about it. Desire to play with their friends who might prefer a different faction or to play with the faction that they more closely identify with, even though their ray group is elsewhere. It's really important for me. I play a lot of alts and I love absorbing the story for each race and having that ability to play with all of my friends across factions is fantastic. At the end of the day, the battle cry is for the horde. It's not 
against the Alliance. It's not death to the Alliance. It's about pride in one's faction. And I think there's a way to preserve that and even strengthen that while giving players the ability to make the same choice we've seen the greatest heroes make time and time again. I can't wait mm -hmm. to do this. I'm seeing a lot of my friends that I never knew had a max level character in the other faction suddenly come out of the woodwork. And then I think everyone these, this, these cross at this point had... Well, I mean, I think everyone always had a an alt on the... Uh, kind of a remix of a little opposite bit of faction hits, revisiting for all, multiple all reasons across the expansion bringing in some so it's nothing new your older favorites into the mythic plus rotation <laughs> and you know we recognize this is kind of a, a closing chapter a little bit of a send-off to shadowlands as everyone gets ready for what happens next what will come next <laughs> want to give you know a fun new challenge for everyone to sink their teeth into really oh yeah cool stuff for for Modern WoW players, I'm super excited about the gear upgrades that you're going to give me and the chance to go back and play some of those, those awesome raids. There's a lot to explore. Very exciting. For our next adventure in World of Warcraft, we're going to go back to Azeroth. We're going to a space with high fantasy. I mean, our fans have asked for this for a long time. This has been kind of the foundation of much of the lore of WoW. So without further ado, let's watch the cinematic. Ooh. Let's go. Ten thousand years ago. The world has been sundered. Dragons cries out in pain. I believe this is your Sarah. We must go. We entrust our ancestral home to you, the Watchers. Let the land slumber. Oh, the chills. Oh. It's already pretty cool. Oh. Wait, what happened? This looks a little a bit like old wire. It's some to me yeah. Yeah, I can see this is some kind of old war themed. Oh, What's his name again? Yeah, he's falling apart. He 
Is he going to stand in there? Oh, he's going trying to close it. Ah. And he's breaking in the meantime, yeah. Well, at least he died a hero. This looks so cool. Is healing, but her fate is yet uncertain. Read her fate. Together, we shall be Azeroth's protectors once again. Here, the new age of dragons uh. shall begin. I can't wait! I can't wait! Oh, ho, ho. dragons! Dragons! This is so cool. No one saw it coming. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Carefully kept secret. But seriously, uh, not we, really. What did we just see there? The awakening of the Dragon Isles. The return. It, it is a Dragon of Isles. Dragons. The dawn of a new age. Right, we've seen Rathian searching for his father's legacy, searching for the Dragon Isles. There's a reason why he hasn't been able to find them until now the beacon going off is that summoning the dragons it is removing the concealment that had hidden the dragon isles from the world but also beckoning the dragons back urgently in a time of need it's ah, a okay pretty good variety of locales within the dragon isles it's yes the dragon isles as kind of standard for wow expansion consist of five zones four standard leveling zones and a new starter zone that we'll get to in a second can you talk a little bit about how the team found ways to thread the dragon aspects throughout the environment? The, the Dragon Isles are a place that is lush and primal, bursting with elemental energy. As Azeroth herself reawakens, those primal forces are expressed Worse. throughout the environment, whether it's magma activity, volcanic activity, whether it's the icy wastes of the Azure Span. And each one of those has a connection oh. to the dragonflight that we've seen before. And it's going to be an amazing place for players to arrive at and explore. All right, you know I'm going to ask. <laughs> yes, okay, so. Can, can, can I be a dragon? Let, yeah, let, let, let's start getting into some features here and what Dragonflight means for you as well as just the place. Um, so first off, yes, we have an all-new playable race, the Drakthir race. Yeah. Uh, this is a dragon, a draconic race, but dragons in... in oh, God, no. ...have the ability to take on a humanoid form. What classes can they be? They have unique abilities as literally a dragon that doesn't quite fit any of our existing classes and so what we're doing is this is not just a new race but it's also a new class you know adding a new race to world of warcraft and not just an allied race is something that we don't do lightly but telling this expansion this story so focused around dragons felt like the perfect time for it so if you are a drag theory, okay. you will be the evoker class drag theory can only be evokers evokers can only be drag theory. and the reason why only a drag theory could be an evoker is that an evoker is really combining the ability to call upon the magic of the different aspects with the unique physical gifts that a Drakthir has, the ability to actually take flight and do an Anixia style strafing. That is cool. Field, land on the other side, knock everyone back with a wing buffet, and then unleash your magical abilities. Yes, please. <laughs> the evoker has two specializations. They're a hybrid of either ranged DPS or healer, and they wear male armor. We figured, you know, with the new hero classes, classes we've added over the years, we have enough melee. We don't need more of those. And also probably don't need any more, any more leather wearers. The raid leaders. Yeah, that was the only thing that we still missed. This is definitely a hero class. And so that means that, you know, like the Death Knights before them or Demon Hunters, they will be starting at level 58. And then they're going to have a new starter zone. So they're going to have a slightly oh, different journey. Oh, cool. The Isles, as opposed to the rest of us that are sailing there from other parts of Azeroth. 
Can you talk a little bit about the customizations? Like what is going to be able to identify my drag queer character? Basically anything and everything. You know, skin color, hair color, jewelry, tattoos, other adornments. You can make this character the expression. Of okay, so basically identity. the demon hunter. New zone. New class, kind of new race. customization Tell us about some of the, the system updates yeah. or features. So, of course, a new expansion brings with it, you know, new systems, new features. And I think in recent expansions, one of the things we've tended to do is really have these deep features that were closely tied to a specific expansion that would then mm -hmm. be left behind as we moved on. Mm -hmm. And we've heard loud and clear from players that, you know, it's kind of a bummer to start off every new expansion by leaving a large part of your character behind, by leaving a large part of your progression behind. So this time around, what we're doing is really pouring all of our energy into permanent revamps, overhauls, and improvements to World of Warcraft's core systems. Things like our progression systems, in this case, our talent system, is something that we want to completely revamp. We want to take a look at our UI. Oh God, another revamp. So with the talent revamp and the arrival of Classic, did you learn anything about how our talents were? Wait, revival of Classic? A generation of players play with those talents and work through those talent trees. Really As in some of the things that, frankly, we lost. Vanilla we and TPC? In the midst of Pandaria style talents and beyond. A big piece of that was some of just the granularity, the feeling of getting a level and spending a point to customize your character to make yourself a bit better in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity that you could have, that's something that we've largely lost. And so the new mm -hmm. talent system avoids oh, Jesus. hitting player power throughput choices directly against those sort of utility hybrid choices, because we know that there's always a right outcome. We there. would. And we also understand that, you know, there's a lot of strength in the flexibility of the modern talent system to let players customize their talents for a particular encounter or for dungeons versus PvP. And we don't want to lose any of that. So, John, UI? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I got this 30-inch monitor trying to keep track of where I am on the map, all my buffs, and, oh, over here, what's going on in chat. It has literally made my eyes go like this. So, yep. you're, and you're not alone in that. We've made a lot of incremental changes and additions. Oh, the talent system looks, looks a little bit weird, but... Now. This is an overhaul. And so we're excited to really modernize the look and feel while staying true to the origins of World of Warcraft. You now, at the same time, we're not looking to take away the... Sort of power user customization there add-ons are still there if you want them but we want a much better default out of the box experience for all players new and old alike and can i reduce elements remove elements if i want to explore the world and, and see the beauty of azeroth when it comes to specific elements as much as possible we want to let players choose what to show and what to hide so that they can control it themselves oh that's cool you mentioned professions i have a critical question about this oh god go on can i wear a chef's hat yeah i knew it <laughs> <laughs> Our approach to professions in Dragonflight is really all about delivering on fantasy and identity as a crafter. And so if you want to be a serious blacksmith, if you want to be a great leather worker, we want to deliver the ability to invest time and energy into that, become a master crafter, be able to make items that are in demand, interact with the community. One of the big pieces that we want to do to support that is a new work order system to have a bit more convenience than just spamming trade chat all day. But if you are someone, you're not yourself a blacksmith, but you have a bunch of mats and you want them forged into a great sword, you can put that work order up, list your mats, offer a commission, and a skilled blacksmith can come along and make you the weapon of your dreams. Oh! I think we left out one thing, though. Be a drag theater, go to Dragon Isles. Can I have a dragon? Uh, What's the fantasy of dragons, if not soaring over the lands? I mean, so really more dragon to mounts? A we're calling dragon riding. It's dynamic. Oh, dragon riding. From momentum to dive bombs, the ability to, you know, just sort of build that speed up and feel the world rushing past you. Okay, the that is cool. Much more exciting than traditional flight that we've made available in the past, but that's also available for players through a customizable dragon mount right from the start so this is a skill you learn over time right to become an awesome dragon rider yes you'll be able to sort of upgrade aspects of your flight but you will have a form of flight from the start and the dragon companion that you have is of course very thoroughly customizable which is a new <laughs> a new thing for us for mounts this is not just oh that's cool so you basically when you come in you get a little oh that reminds me of the um like horns the shape of its head other attachments oh kofu kofu the dragon that we had in uh 
in so BFA as a Horde so player, where you basically get an egg, you need to do dailies, you get your mount, you need to learn how to ride it. Eventually, I, he couldn't ride in general, but and later on he could. And a new starter zone for our Drakthir class, as well as a range of systems revamps, such as a new talent system. That is cool. An update to our UI and an entirely fresh look at professions with more depth than ever before. That is cool. Also getting around the Dragon Isles is going to come in the form of Dragon Riding, which lets you customize and upgrade your own mount so that you can fly in a sense from the start. And of course, as with any new expansion, we have a new set of dungeons, a raid, and much more to come. We also have an alpha that will be starting up in, in, in the future. Check out our website for more information. Oh, in the future, so there's no real so date yet. to help us test out Dragonflight and give us even more feedback to make it better. We do have a deep dive that follows this, so please stay around. Classic players, we haven't forgotten about you. You could probably guess where we're going to go next. One of the all-time favorite expansions for World yes. of Warcraft. Let's watch the cinematic. Yes! Oh, I can't wait. And even if you were. My son, the day you were born, the very forests of Lordaeron. God, more chills. Arthas. have come to an end. You shall be king. Oh, oh this year. Damn. It's just incredible, isn't it? Every time I see the cinematic, I get chills. No pun intended, I do, I get chills. As you saw, Wrath of the Lich King Classic is coming this year. It brings back so many memories. When you see that cinematic, what do you remember from Wrath of the Lich King? Anytime you want to talk about undead frozen dragons, how can you not go back to Sindragosa <laughs> as the source? Mm -hmm. That was the first expansion I played with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. So I can remember on that platform, black goo and, you know, chunks of ice falling off and, and having to repeat that battle with the Lich King. But when we finally downed him, it was such an incredible moment. He jumped up out of his room and I jumped up out of my Aww. office. We're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did it. <laughs> so it's a very lasting tale for me. Mm -hmm. So as you know, with this expansion, you will in pre-patch be able to play the Death Knight. They will start Ooh. at level 55. You don't have to have a high level character to make a Death Knight. So everyone will be able to make one. We're excited to give players some time before Wrath officially launches to get geared up and ready to jump in to Northrend with everybody else. And there are so many zones and areas to explore. In that Northrend. is cool. And I want us to talk about some of our favorites. So for me, Grizzly Hills has a very special place in my heart. Oh, this my favorite zone. I've experienced mm -hmm. in World of Warcraft. I still make my way all the way. I think my favorite I zone and where I spend most of my time is Shoulders are. To get it. I've got to say Dragonblight. The, the wide open nature of the zone, Wormerest Temple in the center of it. It's an unforgettable experience. Dragonblight never really felt kind of like a zone that catches me. Even though it's full of dragons, it's weird. Some changes. So one thing we looked at is Dungeon Finder, and it feels like how we envision Classic, Dungeon Finder is not a good fit for our community. That was kind of the first step that may have eroded some of that social fabric. Now, as, as people have gone through the experience of going back to vanilla, rebuilding those groups, relying on each other, mm -hmm. not wanting necessarily a random participant just to show up and then leave. Yep. Yeah, that makes total sense. But today... You can do that in Shadowlands. You'll be able to do that in Dragonflight. It's a self-selected group of people who specifically want that different experience. Yes. Let's make sure that's what we continue to give them. That leads right into arena teams in Burning Crusade Classic. Oh. So we listen to the community and we remove that because individual rating is 
preferable and better experience for them than arena teams. Also, with Wrath of the Lich King, Barbershop, which allows you to customize your character. Mm -hmm. We're going to be adding a few more options that were not existing when Wrath launched, but also there's another side of this where we are not going to charge a real money fee. It was a paid character customization fee, right? Yeah. It seems the right thing to do that that just be available in game for gold and we add more options to it, right? It's sort of like spell batching in a sense. There's a lot of technical advancements and it's not about the philosophy of what makes classic classic and what brings people together. It's just what's the better experience and let's not artificially restrict something that we can provide a better version of just for the sake of nostalgia. And this is, we're happy to say this is one of those cases. So, okay, yeah. Uh, the level caps being increased to level 80. So we'll be introducing a level 70 boost so that players who want to get in with their friends or just explore North cool. right away will be able to do that. You can apply it to a death knight, but you will be able to use it otherwise. And of course, we have inscription, a whole yep. new profession. Oh yeah, profession. So we'll um, about that. Inscription and was a new as thing. Yeah. we continue yep. this road to Wrath, we're going to be looking to getting a lot more feedback on beta, and we'll make changes as we need to. Such an exciting time to be playing World of Warcraft. I mean, if I want to go back to Lich King, Lich King then of course I have to be a paladin. I have to go back to where I started. I have to go back to the. Adventures to you. Don't forget, there's a deep the class that I basically was known for on the Thank server so that I played on. For spending this time with us, and we'll see you in Azeroth. And we'll see you in Northrend. And in the Dragon Isles. Uh, okay. Hi there, welcome to the Dragonflight Deep Dive. I'm Steve Denuser. And I'm Taryn Gregory. Starting it off here, we're going to talk about the setting and the story of Dragonflight. We've got this great expansion, uh, exciting pre-render trailer that everyone just watched. So let's talk about the setting for Dragonflight, the Dragon Isles. Dragon Isles have been known for a long time in Warcraft history as a mysterious place where the dragons came from long ago, but we never knew much more than that. We're going to this place that is kind of the broodlands of all the dragon flights, the place where they nested, where they built their civilization. The Dragon Isles was the center of the dragon's kingdom when the world was young and the mortal races were just starting to form kingdoms of their own. But when the Legion invaded for that War of the Ancients, that sundering that resulted from the, the explosion of the Well of Eternity, literal the world. Literal sundering of the yeah. continents of Azeroth. And because of the breaking of the world, that magic kind of drained away and the land went dormant. So they had to leave the Dragon Isles behind. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in the pre-render, they left behind some Titan Watchers to look over the land. And when someday they hoped that elemental energy would resurge once again and draw the dragons home and reestablish their kingdom. And that's when the message goes oh, out to the Oh, that's what they were showing the us. Now ah, okay, that makes sense. for the sky to light up with the colors of the aspects once again and for Alex Straza and the others to come home. But the land has changed a lot in all these thousands of years they've been away, and some very old threats have awakened as well. We're looking into the culture of dragons as they exist Old in threats Africa. awakened dragons as well? We today were very different in the early past, the early history of Azeroth. They were Are we going to see death we... savage. Anyway? We now know as proto-dragons. And then some of the dragons were empowered to become the aspects. The green flight, red flight, blue flight, bronze flight, black flight, each with unique powers, each with the ability to protect the world in different ways. These pillars of draconic power appointed to defend Azeroth from threats within and without. The dragons used that power both for good in the case of most of the aspects, but also for nefarious reasons in the case uh, of nefarious. the black dragon flight led by Neltharion who would become Deathwing. And what we will find in Dragonflight is that some of these ancient divisions run deep. And so it begs the question, where do we go from here? If this is an opportunity to reclaim their legacy, to be the protectors, as the cinematic mentioned, that they once were, to do that, they're going to need the help of our heroes, our players, to come to the Dragon Isles with them and face some of these reawakening challenges. Because it's not just that this land is peacefully waiting for the dragons to return and reclaim it. Mm -hmm. There's those old enemies that have awakened as well. Yeah. One of those being a race of kind of elemental half-giants, the Jaradin. 
the Dragon Isles isn't just populated by dragons or just oh, by the Jaredin. There's okay. also many other occupants here in the Dragon Isles. They've been here either just recently oh, that or kind of looks line, like including a, a fan favorite coming back, the ooh, Tuscar. That's going to be awesome. We've got cool. other cultures there as well in the Dragon Isles. We're going to find out about a civilization of centaurs that predates the ones that arose on Oh, this looks a bit like later. Stormheim. And some of our favorite characters that we've seen over the last few expansions, such as Rathian. And whether he's ready to step up into a leadership role, or if there are other alternatives out there that would be better suited to the job of being the aspect of the Black Dragonfly. I think one thing the players are going to be really excited about this expansion is the new playable race, the Drakthir. That's right. right so this is something that Nelfarian, before he was Deathwing, before he went full crazy world dragon, that he put into motion? Nelfarian saw those primalists that were kind of breaking away from the mm -hmm. aspects and what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, in those first experiments, he took the essence of dragons, their strength, their nobility, their wisdom, and he combined it with that scrappiness, that, that adaptability that the mortal races had. And he wanted to use that to create the ideal soldier in his mind, the Drakthir. Exploration is really one of the key themes of this expansion. You're, we're going to be going to this ancient place that the dragons left behind long ago. So we've made these huge zones with all kinds of places to delve into and find little treasures and little secrets tucked away. It's going to be a lot of fun for players to be exploring these landscapes. And there's so much architectural history and how clearly aspirational was the kingdom of the dragon. It kind of looks like it lost so much. Uh, the themes of trying to return to that, to try to find your a legacy, structure to try to combined between Asuna or everything went um, awry. Reference rest and you know, thematic um, questions. Um, what does it mean to be true to your legacy? Are we going to repeat the mistakes of the past? The dragons have had to learn those lessons just like the mortal kingdoms have had to. And I think that's one of the reasons why the dragons see this now as the time that they have to return and they have to step up once again as protectors of Azeroth. We're helping the dragons because the dragons have helped us in the past too. So by using the Explorers League and the Reliquary together, that allows us to delve into some of that history. And when I look, you know, upon the Dragon Isles and all of its visual splendor, I get so excited. Explorers League. The prospect of a truly more um, adventure alongside nothing Calendos, worry quests. along with Rathi and Ebonhorn, um, with Isera's daughter Marithra, as each one of them is trying to find their own flight. I am taken by the exploration and the potential for adventure and just new horizons can you choose your world. own there's going to be aspects. old stories from that time past that history that only the dragons knew for the longest time did we're you basically choose some kind oh god really i don't want to talk like about covenants or whatever but so now we're going to turn things over to some of our colleagues who will take you on that deep dive into the locations and the features of dragonflight i wonder if we can choose some kind of covenant Thing that you choose your Hello, um, Stephanie. I'm Josh. Um, I'm Jackie. Your aspect. And I'm Gary. And we're part of that the teams be cool. that are building the first two zones, the Encounter and the Dragon Isles, the Waking Shore, and the Onaran Plains. Ooh. The very first zone in Dragonflight you're gonna come to is the Waking Shores. It's wild, untamed land. It's waking up around you too, and the elements are just going crazy. The art team again has hit it out of the park. You'll see like a lava mountain flowing in through the beach, giant proto dragons swooping down, gobbling up members of your expedition. We have such ripe opportunities to show elementals rising up because of the crazy magic that's flying around. Uh, the one of the things I love is just how you get to the dragon. It house, looks right? amazing. So you're gonna though. get on your boat in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and the first thing you do is sail between like the dragon ruin architectures. The boats come right alongside each other. You can jump from one boat to the other and just start causing havoc on the other faction's boat. For those who love PvP, this is a great opportunity for war mode. Sure. It's free for all out there. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's OK. There's an innkeeper on the beach. So that if you're in that situation and you don't want to be in war mode anymore, you can just hop out right there. The Reliquary and the Explorers League are working together. The Horde and Alliance are sending an expedition together. It's not the military, it's not the soldiers. Mm -hmm. This is the scientists, the settlers, exploring this new land. So it's a lot more optimistic tone. One of my favorite things about the Waking Shores is the Red Dragonfly, led by Queen Alexstrasza. Alexstrasza. The they have the mandate of nurturing and protecting all life, which means Horde and Alliance, Gorlocks, 
trolls, everybody. So they take that duty seriously. When the Horde and the Lions come to the Waking Shores, they want to be there to help guide the people through the new land and welcome them. But they're uh, not the only one in the Waking Shores. We have the ancestral home of the Black Dragonflight there too, which has fallen on tough times since Deathwing's descent. And so Rathian's coming over to the Isles with us, and he's going to try and come to terms with the state of the Dragonflight, which is a few loyal Draconids and Dragon Spawn trying to hold their ground. What can the future of the Dragonflight be if it's just Rathian? Because it's not just the dragons that are coming back to the Dragon Isles, mm -hmm. but also their longtime rival, the Jardin. I love the Jardin so much. They're half giants that wield the power of magma. And when the Waking Shores and the Dragon Isles went to slumber, they also slumbered. They're back now, and they are ready to raise chaos. Yeah, they're massive. They're riding giant lava mammoths, parading around, just stomping on your face. And they were the enemies of the Dragonfly for so long. They fought against the Red Dragonfly, hunted dragons down, and they're really taking this opportunity to rise up. As the Red Dragonfly have the mandate of nurturing life, they don't want to just stomp out the Jardin completely, but they want to make sure that they don't have the power to affect those around them negatively, to make sure they don't go on a rampage and destroy the ecosystem that has been created here. And so those are awesome things in the Waking Shore, but Seth, there really is only one right answer for the <laughs> best thing in Waking Shores, right? What? This is true. Ducks. We finally have those webbed feet hooligans what? in our game. We cracked the technology. They we can got figure them it out. They yep. can fly. You should be proud. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. The Onaran planes come right after the Waking Shores. Mm -hmm. It's so breathtaking at first glance. The Onaran planes are big, wide open planes. And the player is going to be constricted a little bit. And then you see this big contrast. Whoa. So we don't always get that opportunity. Looks a bit like moment where the combination between Howling Fjord view, and, and they see this area. Um, come out and you got that storm hard shot of that. the planes. And then you see this giant fire proto dragon breathing fire and a herd of centaur like harpoon down the yeah. proto dragon. Oh, that's totally a Howling the Fjord. And the first thing you get to do is go help them kill the proto dragon. Like, how cool is that? Who is Onara? <laughs> Onara is the wild god of the wind. And she's Ooh. appeared before as like this big spirit eagle. She's the one who guided the centaur to the Dragon Isles many, many years ago. She blessed them, took their caravan across, and then showed them the plains. How fun at the beginning of this expansion was exploring the culture of the centaur. The centaur are these mighty, awesome hunters that Back when they first came to the Dragon Isles, they fought the green dragons all day long. Eventually, they realized that we're strong, you're strong, maybe we should stop decimating each other's people. <laughs> um, we'll make peace, we'll make an agreement. You guys hang out in the groves, and the centaur will hang out in the plains. But now, the dragons have been gone for 10,000 years, and the centaur have come so far since then. Mm -hmm. And they've been here, and they've been existing and developing their culture. They all came over as one clan led by the mighty Maruk and Tira, and they founded a new life here. So if you want to get across, you have to follow their rules and their traditions. You have to earn their trust. You are the oh, first God. outsiders to come in generations upon generations. The centaur might rule the open plains, but the green dragons make their home in the groves. And those groves are absolutely gorgeous. And how great a job oh, it is. That it looks a little like bit like the dryads that we had in. Um... And build these beautiful fantasy groves, high fantasy. We want to do lots of things with an open was that plane, again? and we want to be creative with that. But we're restraining ourselves by letting the zone sing, letting the horizon tell the story. We certainly couldn't have done that in the vanilla wow. No, definitely <laughs> yeah. not. The zones are so big, and you can see so far, especially in Onaran Plains. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, the view looks amazing. And we actually increase that distance. It spurs you on to want to adventure and look through the zone and explore everything. The interesting thing for me is we have all these conflicts with the dragonflights. There's missing dragons, there's battles, there's so much crazy stuff happening, but that's not really all we're doing. There's so much extra fun activities for people to do. And the greatest thing is that you need to figure out exactly what's going on and mm -hmm. help solve all the problems that are just sprouting up everywhere. We're just really excited to tell a story that's grounded in Azeroth and exploration. There's so much more to talk about. But now, we're going to have some folks talking about the next two zones that players are going to experience in the Dragon Isles. Ooh, let's go. Thaldrus. Thaldrus? Hello, My name is Kate. I'm Christy. I'm Kate. I'm Sean. We're going to talk today about Thaldrasses in the Azure Span. Mm -hmm. 
So Azure Span is going to be the third zone that players adventure through, and it's one of our biggest zones that we've done in the Dragonfly, maybe even to date. We knew it was going to be like the largest visual elevation change, and it really started with this great concept art. When we first were taking a look at the design, we kept coming back to one of our favorite Wrath Zones, which was Grizzly Hills. Mm. And we really wanted to take that, but wowify it more. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been up to the Bay Area, but in the morning, that coastal fog comes in and dips down into the redwoods and that sun shines through. Ooh. That's really what we wanted to encapsulate with this forest. And not only do we have redwoods, but we've got all different types of trees. Eventually, it'll break open into this wide open tundra that's just golden and red, and you will reach up to another level of elevation where you get to see the snow. The majority of the zone is covered in snow and ice. We have giant frozen waterfalls, ice rivers as far as the eye can see. And Sean, I know in the forest, we can expect our first creatures. We have a small group that lives there called the gnolls. These gnolls are all throughout the forest in Azure Span. They've made this their home. Some gnolls with strange magic that we're going to find out what exactly Wait, that's what? about. Snow gnolls, or as I call them, the snolls, uh, <laughs> up in the winter area. And then some regular gnolls that are just going to be around the forest area. So then we go into the big open tundra where we meet our second group, the Tuscars. Tuscars. It's going to be yeah. really neat to explore their culture a lot more. And those kids are adorable. I absolutely love the Tuscar. <laughs> Honestly, all my downtime is probably just me hanging out with the Tuscar. <laughs> So it's been a little while since you've seen them. We remember the Tuscar from Wrath of the Lich King. They're also getting a nice cool up for their models, along with expanding their culture. So there are going to be male Tuscar, female Tuscar, Tuscar kids. So we're going to fight alongside them, which includes help from a certain group of dragons, the blue dragons. Blue, yeah. We're going to follow I mean, what's the story there, of so... Galagos, our oh. blue dragon buddy from the Kirin Tor, and he's going to be adventuring into Syndragos' archives. It's a hmm. giant zone. I don't There's know if I like surprises. his new model there, we head over to more. Aldrazes. Aldrazes. It's really incredible. But yeah, Ursa was already basically the previous zones and seeing a lot of ruins. Uh, mm -hmm. No doubt that it would dragon, be blue uh, dragon uh, flight. But when you get to Thaldrazis, everything is perfectly intact. It's beautiful. It's oh, Jesus. It is the seat of power for all five dragon flights and home of the dragons. It feels that this has way to be the black dragon flight, right? Vertical mountains. We've got these great cave systems where you may end up finding black or red. Hordes. My favorite dragon flight right now is the bronze. They've got a really oh. cool area. In oh, yeah, Dragrasis, bronze could be as well. Their magic is time. There's so many cool story hooks that we could dig into there. There's so many cool gameplay options. And we have a little bit of an adventure for players. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. We really wanted it to feel like their old stomping grounds. One of the really cool features is going to be the main city and player hub for this expansion, Valdraken. It is a culmination of all of the dragon's efforts to put together what a city would look like. So we ended up having a bunch of really fun small vignettes where you can see that the blue dragon flight is hosting a public library and the red and green dragon flights both have their own separate gardens. We'll also have um, some convenient services mm -hmm. for players, including an auction house. In oh, the thank city, God. Which will be really nice if you're looking for more exotic wares. The thing that really sold me on Galdrazis was the initial concept art we got of Tearhold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. And this is a 10,000-year-old Titan technological marvel. Tearhold has these awesome aqueducts that actually come out from the structure all the way to the city across the valley. Oh, that's cool. And in the cinematic, there's just this amazing shot where you see Alex Straza swoop under one of them. And there's Reminds me a little bit of the... across her wings. So when iron players are flying around themselves. They Forge. Have their Alex Sorry, Strasse I've got a name. Yeah, Iron Forge. Incredible place and filled with so uh, much construction. Tearhold was built by Tear. He was a Titan Keeper back in the day who helped the Aspects fight Galaxy. Tear. And got it. Yeah. When they settled on the Dragon Isles, he built this facility. And even though Tear is gone, the dragons have held him in reverence. Tear is a I believe we and they've let met the titans in, maintain the place. Um, An incredible amount Storm of history Peaks? has happened since then. Lights have been nearly wiped out. There have been invasions, betrayals, aspects have died. And these are the kind of things that leave marks on a society. So now they're all back here and they're all here together. As we were designing the zone mm -hmm. and the, the city itself, we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we tell those stories at the same time as making sure that this is a really convenient place for players to go mm -hmm. and, you know, go shopping, as you know, they tend yeah. to do. 
So much adventuring happening on the Dragon Isles. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> As a player, you probably don't have your own dragon wings. You are going to learn the art of dragon riding. It's that so is vertical. cool. And I'm just excited to like dive off the tops of towers and swoop under things. It's actually one of the things that we're about to learn about next. Cool. The last time that we had something riding related Hi, was, um, I'm I believe, Pandaria. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about the Drakthir Evoker, our new race and class coming in Dragonflight. We're here to talk about not only the Evoker, but also dragon riding, which is our exciting expression into the exploration of the Dragon Isles. We knew with a dragon themed expansion, we wanted to let you play a dragon. Not a big dragon, Alex draws a size. That'd be tough to fit into raids. I'm sorry, Jake. Okay. I know, I know. <laughs> it's fine. But a draconic humanoid. So the Drakthir, created by Neltharion. And like our other hero classes, you get to choose if you want to start on the Horde or Alliance side on character creation. So let's talk a little bit oh, about okay, the cool. class they can be. What's unique about it is because the, the Drakthir are created by an aspect, they have the ability to wield the magic of all five dragon flights. So evokers can take advantage of red magic and blue magic and bronze magic. And to show that, we created a visual, what we call a prismatic effect. This prismatic effect is basically the coalescence of all their energy as they channel it into whatever spell that they're going to cast. You have a red magic spell called Pyre. So when you shoot it out of your mouth, it twirls in the air with all five of the Dragonflight's magic as it turns into the red spell before landing on your enemies and exploding and hopefully burning them. Oh, <laughs> okay, that looks, <laughs> okay, yeah, that looks cool. They use all five was really important to us, but we did want to make sure that each specialization focused on two because casting five different colors gets a bit messy. So their damage dealer specialization, their first of two, Devastation, mm -hmm mostly focuses on red and blue magic. Red being very fast and explosive, burning everything with pyre, whereas blue is more focused and overwhelming. You can shoot a beam of energy out of your mouth to disintegrate one single enemy in front of you. There's a healer spec called preservation. The healer spec is gonna focus mostly on your green and your bronze magic. So mm -hmm. your green is gonna be evocative of the Emerald Dream, your growth and your nurturing spells. Oh, that looks cool. And then you have your bronze magic, which is gonna be more timey-wimey. So you get to heal a wound faster. So in addition to the visuals and the animation, which all make you feel very powerful, we really wanted the player to have a physical connection to the cast. We have a new type of spell called Empower, where when you actually hold down the button on your keyboard, it charges up a spell. The longer you charge it up, it might do more damage or hit more targets depending on the spell. Oh, that's you interesting. Really physical connection and control that's new for World of Warcraft and I think is feeling really, really good. We have some great animations. Thank you, Andy. You're you love it, Andy. You feel physical when you're casting your spells. You can actually fly around the battlefield and cast while you're flying. Raining fire and death from above. It's great. In addition to the gameplay, though, another part of feeling draconic is looking like a dragon. Well, we talk about dragons breathing fire, but you know what's actually fire? What's actually These fire? These customizations. Oh, my goodness. Hey. <laughs> but no, they're really, really they're cool. They're awesome. Because you have both your draconic form and your Oh, that, yeah, form. that and looks pretty cool. The customization options for both of them are amazing. They're very good. What but about color? Just tell yeah, me tell you us about the, the color. You can do a lot of matching. So your visage form mm -hmm. can have scales that are the same color as your draconic form. But my favorite? Super favorite part mm -hmm. of customization for the visage form, mm -hmm. hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, why? Because I can actually do this in game. In ga yeah. The tech is here. <laughs> we finally <laughs> did it. As players make their way through each of the areas of the Dragon Isles, they'll partner up with the Dragon Flights to move through the air as they've never done before. You'll notice I did not say flying because <laughs> flight has a very specific meaning for World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And, and we're talking about something new called dragon riding. And as the players are honing their dragon riding skills, they're gonna to get to see all new animations that go along with the different look and feel of the drakes. We're aiming to shake up movement with this new system, providing players with a deeper immersion with forces like momentum and gravity. We knew that for dragon flight, we were gonna have the opportunity to show players a whole new set of dragon isle drakes, mm -hmm. completely unique from all the other things they've seen. It looks so Batman. amazing. So we wanted to come up with a movement system that would add that sense of physics, weight, and gravity, like you were mentioning. We knew it was going to take a huge team effort, not just animation, but it was going to take effects. It was going to take the engineering team, who we rely on heavily, and that combined with some new animations really helps to lend that <clears throat> feeling of physics as you move through the air in ways that you haven't before. And the icing on the cake is going to be some really cool effects that we've added on top of all of that 
So for example, when you start hitting, you know, maximum velocity, you're going to see contrails coming off the edges of the wings. Oh. And then as you do your rolls and spirals, you build up more and more speed. There's going to be mm -hmm. some screen effects on the display to indicate that you're reaching maximum velocity, ah. which really adds to the overall kind of immersion and sense of reality. And if you screw as up, do you also take more damage? The Isles, I mean, I'm sure we all will screw it up their eventually. Appearances. Things like snoots, horns, and tails, elusive dragon isle drake armor, and Ooh. more. Can I have spikes? Definitely. Okay, we want to provide players with all new skills to play with, as those who can use their momentum well mm -hmm. can reach higher and higher heights and bring on new, more difficult challenges. We just have so many new, gorgeous options mm -hmm. to choose from, and I'm just so excited for all of them. I'm excited for the whole thing. I mean, it's been a lot of fun to work on, but I can't wait to actually get in the game, play it with you guys. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to fly around Dragon Isles. It's yeah. gonna be great. Next it up, looks you're so going cool. to hear about the talent revamp and the UI changes. I like the whole Dragonflight. idea that you can take the whole environment to uh, have the idea to actually fly. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm Crash. I'm Jay. And I'm Laura. We are very excited to share so you're finally revamping the WoW HUD UI. And it is also time for a major revamp to talents and specializations. I have a big question for the group. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it took for us to finally revamp the WoW HUD? My guess is like 15 years. Close, 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. Wow. You know, technology has changed a lot since we made the UI back in 2004. Now you have like bigger monitors and us, we have better dev tools to work with. So it makes sense to have the revamp right now. Also, if you look at the game today, the art evolved beautifully over the years. And if you look at the HUD, the HUD looks like it got frozen time. So when we approached this, we wanted to create a layout experience that players could customize, move things around, adjust it to fit their needs. Add-ons today, they do a lot for player customization. The downside is, is that not everybody uses them. It's about time that everybody has the opportunity to use them, that they become a part of the base UI. Yeah, and we are working very closely with our user research team to make sure we are hitting the goals that our player needs. It allowed us to add new functionality, to improve accessibility in a lot of areas, and on top of that, we are going to be improving the art. Yeah, so the art update, it's a big part of this project. The UI that we have today has a lot of charm and personality, and players have been using that for 18 years. So with that in mind, we want to respect the players who really like the current UI, mm -hmm. but do a more than take to it. Removing the clutter and giving more visibility for your gameplay. So the new minimap, it looks bigger, and the uh, health bar is also much bigger. If you look at the action bars, okay, and that looks a lot menus, better. They have less head frames, and you can really open up your game. It looks so kind of the same as it used to, but and of more course, polished. We want to find iconic pieces from the current HUD, but we want to bring it back in a nice way. So mm -hmm. we for sure updated the Griffins. They look so nice now, and the Horde. Don't worry, we got you. We're gonna have your version as well. So let's talk about the Oh, they give we each their own. Wait, did I even I never various HUD elements I never play screen. paid attention so to if to the, the HUDs were different on the right corner, all the way over to the left corner, or if I want to bring my action bars from the bottom and kind of put them more in the center by my character, those are all things that I'll be able to do. Absolutely. And oh, each that's of those cool. different components will have various sets of options that you'll be able to work with. They'll be able to save it, edit it, copy it, name it. Also, it'll remember which spec you're in. So if you're someone who jumps around a lot, as you switch, it will switch to whatever HUD layout you have for that spec. Oh, this is that's an cool. Project. That is working cool. On it, so we really want to hear back from you. Usually as a DPS, a it's a little bit more uh, crowded so than, UI for example, a healer or tank. Talent system that hadn't changed in a long time, like you said before. And we really started with how can we have players have more choice over what their character has? As you level up, mm -hmm. they give you a new spell or a new ability, something that kind of makes you stronger, but it's it's determined by the designers. We decide the order. Yeah, we started looking for a system that would give players a much wider set of options. And after looking at all those things, what we really returned back to was the idea of trees. But it's actually two trees. We have a, a class tree that offer different class utility, and then we have a spec tree that is focused on performing your role, whether that's damage, tank, or healing. Can I just jump in and say that I personally am super excited about having trees come back. There's a big nostalgia hit for me. As we said, we have these two trees because we feel like 
picking a specialization is a really important part of mm -hmm. your World of Warcraft character now. And so we want to make sure that when you choose that, it kind of affects the tree in some way. Yeah, as soon as you open your talent tree, you'll see something new. The class side will have some abilities filled out for free, just kind of starting you off mm -hmm. in that spec you've chosen. But then you'll have your first point to spend in the class tree, which could be something related to that spec or role, or it could be something from elsewhere in the class. There's a lot of oh, uh, things that we okay. could do like here. Like we really did back in the day. Players okay. to perhaps make combinations that they've never really been able to see in the game before. This is an opportunity to put a lot more art and fantasy in the actual talent UI itself. You have seen that a lot through most recent expansions, but not the base UI. We want you to be able to tinker with it. You know, we want you to be able to make a lot of changes at a lot of times and not necessarily have to commit. The power really is coming back to the player. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something we want people to feel locked into. And so one of the things that we'll be preserving is the ability to change these talents uh, at the same kind of frequency that you do now. Yeah, the old school players, when you see trees this time, just think, yeah, I'll, I'll go from my raid night to my arena match and figure out what I think is the best for both of those. And that's a process we want to make really fluid. So we're building a save load feature that lets okay, you yeah. create your build, Wanted to ask about name that. it, save it, and then load that it is up good. very quickly and freely. Talents were really about the breadth of options. So you don't really have to all check all the, cool the options years, again if you want to switch. Coolest, it's when players can hold the building blocks of what can make up their class, their spec, and put them together. So basically some people are like, okay, leveling, and some really have cool um, that we've been working content solo, on, or very arena, that. dungeons, raids. So yeah, that they have the... We can't wait to see the reaction that you have to them, and please reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on them. And next up, we're going to talk about professions and dragonflight. Oh yeah, finally. Hi, I'm Joanna. And I'm Eric, and we're going to talk about our plans for professions and dragonflight. Professions have been a staple of World of Warcraft forever, and they've seen lots of really cool incremental updates over their life. But for dragonflight, we want to do something a bit different. We really want to rethink professions and figure out how to make them part of your identity as a player, if that's what you want. We really want to make sure that professions feel fun and relevant across all levels of gameplay. Mm -hmm. That brings us to our first update, something that we're calling crafting orders. If you want to have something crafted for you, that but you sounded don't interesting, have yeah. the skill or the right profession to do it for yourself, you can have it crafted through a crafting order. You can basically browse any of the recipes that can be crafted, pick the one you want for yourself, and then you include some or all of the reagents needed for the recipe, including ones that only you can get your hands on. You can find someone in person to do it right in front of you for you, or you can also go to an NPC and using an auction house-like interface, send the order. Oh. If you're doing this, you can pick, do you want to send the order to anyone, sort of a public order, or do you want to only send it to your guild or to a specific other player? Maybe it's a friend who you know will be able to craft the item really well for you. If you are really dedicated to your craft, you're going to be the best at what you do. One of the coolest things about this is the item you had crafted can also be soul bound. In the past, you could only get your hands on crafted soul bound items by having that profession yourself. Now anyone can have them crafted for them, which is really neat and really expands the number of items that we can provide that are really powerful because everyone can have them crafted through the crafting order system. This is also really cool. Also an easy way for people to um, building your client base. People are going to come back to you to get certain items. Maybe you're the best at making it or you always throw in a little something extra. You're also going to be leveling up your profession. Isn't yeah, it really exactly. Great? That so was the an easy way to level up. Craft, as well. You're going to notice a lot of different things, but probably the biggest is the introduction of quality, both to your crafted items and your gathered reagents. Quality works in a pretty simple way. Cool. If you craft something that's a higher quality, it's just going to be better. For a piece of gear, that probably means a higher item level. If it's, for instance, a potion, you know, that might mean a more powerful effect at a higher quality. Mm -hmm. and we're doing a lot of new things in the UI. We've put a lot of work into it to make sure that the professions feel really special and unique. And another thing you might notice in the crafting UI that's new is the introduction of stats, specifically to your professions, both crafting and gathering. And this is another sort of major input into quality. Probably the biggest source of your ability to craft items at a higher quality is through crafting specializations. We've had crafting specializations crafting in the past, as far back as original World of Warcraft. With Dragonflight, you can go out and earn specialization points in a whole bunch of different ways. So oh. maybe you find an old book on a bookshelf in a ruin somewhere, or a hermit in a cave who can teach you a little bit about your profession. Basically like so the daily quests. Um... Uh, you might decide that first you want to become an armor smith. 
And the more points you spend in armor smithing, the better you're gonna get at crafting all armor. This also means that if you specialize one way, other people in your guild may specialize in a completely different path. So this means that your guild could have several top blacksmiths and everybody is providing something unique. One is for the gear, one is for the weapon. Which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Now that reminds me of another update. We're actually adding crafting tables to all the different crafting professions. We're gonna take those and we're gonna put them all in the main city of Veldraken. And you know, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna get to see all the different players crafting their items. Wait, you, so you can do tables. potions and yeah, whatever. Yeah, you're gonna walk into the city and you're gonna see like all these alchemists huddled over here and you're gonna see all these blacksmiths over by the forge. There will be other players filling orders or grabbing orders. It's gonna be a whole new crafting area that's gonna make you- Oh, that sounds so amazing. World. It just seems like a much more so you basically can't make potions on the road anymore what i'm most excited about though is the gear we're introducing new types of gear for every profession and when you go to say Wait, find a node you're actually going to just switch into that gear it's going to be really great you're not going to have to carry that stuff around in your backpack anymore that is cool it's actually going to be dedicated slots for each each of your pieces of gear but I'm a numbers guy. I love progressing. All pieces of profession gear will have those special stats that we mentioned before on them. And as you get your hands on better versions of the gear, you know, it's really going to help you get better at your profession. I can't wait. Thank you so for cool. tuning in to the Dragonflight Deep Dive. You've heard a lot about the content and changes coming in Dragonflight, and we've got a lot more in store for you in the coming months. Until then, we'll see you in Azeroth. Oh, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. Ooh. All right. Yeah, so basically told us everything that we wanted to know. Um, Yeah, I can't wait to play. Um, I want to experience it myself. Um, basically, while we are doing this, uh, let's see um if we can um sign up right away i don't think we can let's see dragon flight um alpha ops right so yeah um so far it was really interesting it sadly it doesn't really tell you um when it's released there um when it's released um most likely somewhere at the end of the year right so like uh, november ish um nothing recruited friend content updates no perfect friend da, 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 da. go to low flow nothing nope okay no okay i have to check that one out um uh, after the stream um so yeah it, it was basically um pretty in-depth they were talking about the zones the four zones what i do think is um the four zones is basically the four um the four aspects or at least four aspects and the fifth is somewhere at a different island so maybe uh the black track of flight is somewhere else or something um so we might see some old familiar faces so i don't know which familiar faces we will see other than might some kind of weird way of bringing uh deathwing back uh maybe you know the whole uh black rock lair black, you know the whole black rock area um so yeah um i mean we have seen everything they have explained everything even dui stuff professional stuff um, the only thing that I wonder is if you can only make them in the, the, the main capital city or they do allow you to do it on the open field. I mean, I don't mind doing it in the city. I mean, it's more like, okay, I need this. I need to go back to the city, do what I need to do and then progress again. Um, especially while leveling, right? It's, it's like, okay, I'm going to pick all the flowers here. When I'm done, I ha probably have to go back to the main city. And when you're done with the main city, um, yeah, you might have to go back to, uh, basically go back to the next zone where you want to level. Um, yeah, there's nothing more to add to it, to be honest. Um, I thank you guys for watching and, um, yeah, let me know, um, let me guys know what you guys think. Um, for the people on youtube uh yeah leave it in the comments down below where you think that is uh what what you guys think of it uh what do you think for example about the whole ui system 
about the whole uh, about let, just give me your opinion based on the professions based on the new uh, race uh, yeah let me just let me know let me just just let, just let me know in the comments down below and um, yeah I'll see you guys later